So, uh, Lark, I had a I had a question for you. Um, so there's a lot of tribalism in crypto, and I know that you probably are the subject. I mean, I have a much smaller channel compared to you, and I I feel that tribalism on my small little niche channel. So I know it just must be 10 to 100 times the amount of tribalism affecting you. And it's it's really fascinating because when I, when I was first getting into this space and then seeing all these YouTubers, I just found it astonishing how people can be so negative towards a certain cryptocurrency. I mean, you know, you heard the term shit coin and, you know, while it's, it's applicable to certain coins, I think that it's unfair to certain projects just because you don't like an individual or a project doesn't make it shit. And just because you lost money doesn't make it shit either. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's very interesting because people take it so personally. And if you're so smart and you have all the answers, then, you know, no one is telling you to put your money in project a, just pick the projects that you think are going to succeed. But that's, that's not the point. The point is that, um, you know, moving forward, there's this whole term of third generation blockchains. And I know that there's not going to be one that rules them all. It's it's just foolish thinking. Um, you know, people speak different languages. They there are different cultures out there. There's different money. People are just different. They're going to use different things. So, you know, I'm not a fan of crypto X, but crypto X still may succeed in the long run. So, as far as third generation blockchains, when we're when we're talking about um, EOS and um, we're talking about Cardano, what where do you see the future? Um, I mean, we can even throw Ethereum in there, even though it's second generation. But what do you see as the future for third generation blockchains? What do you see the landscape looking like? Um, have you thought about that? There's 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 a lot to unpack there, and I, I just want to share a fun little anecdote about um, you know people who think everything's a scam. I remember there was a guy, it was right after Cardano came out on the market, it was trading on Bittrex, and somebody wrote something in my comment section, like, oh, Cardano's a giant scam. I bought it for five cents, and I sold it for two and a half cents. I'm just like, well, you didn't have to lose half your money by selling Cardano, and then, of course, it went to over a dollar later on. So, you know, it's, um, it, it's a, a, so to a certain extent, I tell that anecdote because there's a certain extent of immaturity within the crypto market, which really means that the tribalism comes out because it's this recreation of team sports. And it's it's funny because you don't see it with the stock market. People aren't there going, oh, my Disney stocks are so much better than your Apple stocks. And it's just, <laughs> it's quite <laughs> funny when, when you kind of think about it, you know? But this is, this is the kind of reality of the community is that there is a lot of just average investors. And most people are really awesome and really get it and are really cool. And then there's people who just, they're kind of, you know, out doing their own thing and it's kind of funky sometimes but in terms of third generation blockchains when those really i mean when we're really talking about real implementation and we see this this beautiful ecosystem of you know the token economy taking off it's going to be an amazing thing and there will be no one blockchain to rule them all it doesn't it doesn't even make sense to have one blockchain to rule them all and people are saying well yeah but there's one internet well, sure, there's one internet, but you have to imagine within the one internet, there's so many different applications in terms of technology that are used in different places for different reasons. And, you know, some people are using, you know, Tor browsers over here and some people are using whatever over here. And so it's just as there will be this just absolute multiplicity of different blockchains, which are providing real value for different use cases. And, you know, when Ethereum 2.0 comes out, for example, that's going to be a game changer in terms of what Ethereum has to offer, but by the time that Ethereum 2.0 comes out, there's going to be some very well-developed competition. Cardano being one of those, because I don't see Ethereum 2.0 coming out within the next year, realistically. I mean, they've only just got the recent um, fork to happen. And so we are going to see a system where there's probably, let's say, 10 or 20 major blockchains and those are the ones that are running, you know, smart contract functionality and wh whether it be Cardano or EOS or Ethereum, any others, right? And then there will be another good handful of actual currency, cryptocurrencies. So that's going to be your Bitcoin and your Litecoin and uh, maybe your Dash, something like this. And those will be coexisting as well. And so I think interoperability is going to be the absolute key when it comes moving forward to see this real new generation of blockchain technology have amazing real world use because the last thing we want is a bunch of walled gardens. That's the old system, right? 
We need to have interoperability. We need to be able to communicate between chains, between communities. And the funny thing is the technological communication, I hope at some point can move into a communication between the communities in a positive way too, because we see the bridges already being built. I mean, most people are bridging to Ethereum right now, but that will move out. That will be growing as time goes on and we'll see an absolute um, explosion of interoperability where you'll be able to tr exchange value across a whole range of systems. And most people won't even know they're doing it, which is the amazing thing. That's a brilliant analysis, Lark. That was really good. And, you know, so it sounds kind of like the tribalism may break down as the bridges between the cryptocurrencies build. I think some of the tribalism comes from I own this coin or I put I bet all of my money on this horse. Therefore, I want this horse to win. Or let's say you invested in 10 different cryptocurrencies. Well, there's thousands of them out there. And and there's 100 of them in the top 100. So mathematically anyway. And so people <laughs> people always want... That's good math. That's good math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100% of the top 100 coins. Anyway, so people always want their horse to win. And I think that's why the tribalism kicks in uh, is, is one of them. But I, I kind of get what you're saying there with the interoperabilities, you know, that would not be the one crypto to rule tomorrow, but that's what brings everything together. And to compare it, the internet is a good analogy because the internet isn't the same all over the world. There's different pieces and parts of internet all over the place, wireless or whatever means that it's communicated on. But as long as they have a common protocol, an exchange of data, occurs between them then, then it works so i guess someday that that's how it will work with cryptocurrencies it just has to be done right but uh great Absolutely. analysis yeah but i think also <clears throat> the bear market kind of forces everybody to come together again uh, because now everybody wants to know how do we get our industry to the next step and there's a few really big really common problems right? One is regulation, for example. How do you get the regulation to the next step? And so you've seen a lot of associations come out, uh, partnerships between different blockchains come out, uh, different uh, geographic locations in the world to figure out, okay, how do we solve the regulation for this country? And how do we solve the uh, regulation for this country? And so that really brings people together because you can't go to a government and be like, I represent Cardano and this is what I think we should do. Because they're going to say, well, what about all the other blockchains? What do they want to do? Uh, or do you agree with them? And so you have to come at, as a group and say, not only do I think this is the best way forward, uh, look at all these other blockchains that are totally independent from me, but they also think this is the best way forward. And that's a much stronger case. And so regulation is really something that I think has brought people together. And another one I think is education. Uh, because if you imagine a, a blockchain a uh, company right now, uh, a lot of them have a lot of cash, right? They raise a lot of money in some way or another, and they want to turn that cash into developers somehow, right? The problem is turning cash into a blockchain developer right now is extremely difficult uh, just because there's so few people that are well-trained in this domain. And so any company, no matter how skilled they are, no matter how much money they have, they're running into this skill gap. Okay, and this is a problem every blockchain has. And so I think you're seeing a lot of educational efforts come out right now. And that was something that we were also part of with the launch of Emergo India. We we're trying to launch an education program in India, but it's part of a larger picture of uh, blockchain projects really investing heavily into hackathons, into universities, into education to try and together solve this uh, knowledge gap that we need to get the developers uh, present for the next step. We need to find who will build, uh, you know, the next dApps, next uh, ecosystem. And that's a problem we all have to solve together. Absolutely. That's that's very well said. The, I think the only one caveat I'd make to that is, interestingly, the, uh, the Bitcoin maximalists who may unfortunately be the most toxic tribalists out there who believe that every cryptocurrency besides Bitcoin should die. And this comes from someone who's a big Bitcoin enthusiast. I love Bitcoin. But I feel like there's a certain amount of people 
and they don't necessarily represent represent the developer community behind Bitcoin, mind you, but who um, are you know calling for everything that's not Bitcoin to die. But that's not the way forward, and it's not the way that any serious business is approaching it. It's not the way that institutions are approaching it. It's not the way that um, you know the exchanges or any other major operators in the crypto space are approaching it. It is we are trying to decentralize the world, and no one blockchain, no one community is going to do that. The Bitcoin maximalists, it's a its a very interesting thing because they completely disregard all the work that's being done for all the other projects. And to tell you the truth, I kind of understand. You got into Bitcoin early. Your wallets are very big. I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's really no incentive for you to, <laughs> to move to any other coin. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be a billionaire next year. You know, there, I, it, you know, it's just a matter of time. I can, I don't need to play the game, but for a lot of us that maybe came after and, you know, we're not, we're, we don't have billion dollar pockets, you know, we're looking for opportunities as well. And the, the landscape looks completely different. Absolutely. And there's great opportunities in Cardano is one of them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, 